Welcome to Termite Machine Works. My name is Keith and today we have a new project. This new project is a little bit of a tear down and recondition or rebuild if we can. This is a Bobo Pinta uh, oil cooler part number 838966 alright stamped right on the side here or formed or cast right inside there. Um, the customer removed this from his, his boat, one of his engines on the boat there and uh, he has one issue right here with a screw being broken here and there's a lot of uh, corrosion and material lost around the aluminum casting on his flange here and he thought it would be best to go ahead and have me finish dismantling it, get the core out he'll send the core out and get it worked on and then we're going to take a look at seeing if we can do some build up some machining, some repair on this aluminum housing here instead of having to buy a new one and uh, so I'm going to bring you in close to give you a good look at this whole thing as we're dismantling it and the amount of material that's lost by corrosion and stuff. Along the same time that we're doing uh, this project here, we want to talk a little bit because of the zinc anoid I'm sure that is in on this plug right here and the pros and cons and the mist and, uh, and, and the subject of changing the zinc anoids in on coolers and stuff like that. Um, there's, you know, the basics of the pros and cons was the anode breaking up and small particles clogging the holes and stuff. Most cases I've noticed the small particles they're talking about is the zinc anode that's completely eaten up and has broke loose because they didn't change it in time and it starts plugging up the ports. Um, it, it, the, the main thing about coolers and, and and after coolers, oil coolers, and all these um, actions where you're converting and you've got two different liquids separated by each other and most of the time it's raw water that you you got in on the cooling side. You have got to service these items. Ignoring them until you have a problem is the worst thing you could do. And most cases that's how the scenarios come about whether the zincs are working or not working. And if a zinc is being eaten up, it is working, and uh, you want to keep that in mind. Uh, all right, let me uh, uh, skip the chat here for a little bit. Let's get on with the project, and we'll come back to uh, uh, the anodes and what we actually find inside this cooler here. Okay, here along this edge here is giving you a good view in here. You can actually see the threads from that bolt right there. And you can see some of that area right here. It's been lightly bead blasted uh, to get rid of some of the rust and corrosion and stuff. The flange just still looks in good shape and you can still see the gasket and stuff like that in there. This little area right along in here where those seep surfaces meet there and over a period of time the moisture gotten in there and of course it eats on the softer materials. All right, the zinc anoid, we're probably going to have to pull that because, as you can see, this nut sticks out past there, and I believe that's got to go out in that direction that way. Um, the other thing is you can go ahead and you can see this pattern right in here, all of this area. It was hitting good there, that's solid, hitting good over here. Very little bit is good material around that port. Same thing over here. But this is all like rusted in here. So we're going to see, if, after I get this out, we do this other repair. We're going to see if we can do a light machining across the surface here to renew a good flat mating surface to hold a good seal around these ports. You can see three helicoils. So this one here is probably helicoiled uh, also. And they look in good shape. And we can just make sure that running down a bolt and making sure that they're fine. Um... And uh, that looks like about it. You can see here's the top side. You can see how much is eaten out in those areas there. But that first side we were looking at was the worst right there. All right, let's take this and we're going to go clamp it in a vise and we're going to play a little heat and tweak. We're going to heat here, we're going to tweak on the nut here or the head of the bolt. Before we get started on the removing the frozen bolts or the bolts yet to be proven that they're frozen but we want to remove them without causing any damage. 
Um, I had to exchange out some bottles, and my son Eric just helped me lift those down off the trailer and exchange them in on my rack here, so I have uh, two full bottles. And <clears throat> during the season, my trailer was parked over there, and I, I knew, and I've been expecting it because it happens quite a bit, where you have outside bottles and you don't use them for a long period of time, they become uh, great places for the little hornets uh, to create their nests inside the cap. Now this cap here is pretty safe and there's, uh, there's a couple sealed up cones and everything else in here, uh, but there's no, no liveies in here. Uh, I had given them a quick sprayer dose of uh, um, get away from the spot is what I call it and I sprayed it into the cap there but this one here still had some activity in it now I just wanted to go ahead and show you these critters in here real close okay there's a couple of them still on the edge of the nest there see if I can put a little flashlight on them a little spotlight there All right, so we're just kind of setting this on the ground and we'll see. I don't think they're going to fly anywhere. We, we've got to drop a temperature. This is a pretty good temperature uh, to get in and deal with hornets and bees and stuff like that because they, they start coming uh, lethargic, I guess you call it. And they're not so... Normally, if, if this is in the middle of summer and they see me playing around with this right here, they would be on my, uh, you know, they would be all over me. All right, um, just kind of a little tip to kind of pay attention and, you know, if the guys want to fly out, I'm going to let them fly out. Uh, um, I don't know if they really have any place to go. So, kind of keep an eye on it. If you start playing around with cylinders that have been sitting outside for a long period of time, just be aware that um, not just bees and, and hornets and stuff like that can make a little nest in there, but also spiders can be in there and uh you know just not so much here on the cape here but there are places where black widows like to hang out and it, it may be a, a good place for that to happen as well so <clears throat> you don't need to be changing out your bottles or or hooking them up or rigging them up and and uh, get stung or bit um so just it's kind of a you don't think about it too often but it does happen all right let's get on the inside here i think we feel a little sprinkle coming on we are supposed to be getting some rain. Now I want to go ahead and get this done and get these bottles back inside so I don't have to empty out this cart tray here. All right. All right, we brought you in here close. I got this in the vise here and I got a piece of aluminum sandwiched in between the surface here just so I don't have a vise grip or bite into here. Not that we're going to hammer or bang on this thing. I should be able to heat here and break it loose with a nut here or the wrench here on the hex of the bolt. All right. I thought these were uh, Volvo. I, th I thought was all metric, so I thought these were 13 millimeter. But <clears throat> the half inch actually fits a little tighter on worn or rusty or 13 millimeter hexes. And when when you got a good fit, you don't have to really worry about it. And I'm going to use a 12 sided socket um, or drive. And if it was kind of rounded off, I would I would be getting a six-sided wrench of some kind to socket or box in to get on here to grab this. Uh, because I want to I want to make sure that I'm going to have the grip onto the hex and not slip there. Make sure that um, I have enough grip to rotate the bolt. Sometimes when you get into this kind of scenario, the rust is so bad that the head of the bolt is rounded off, and then you got to do something about it. All right, after we get this done with the, removing these, hopefully no problems, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to be well building up and putting a nut on that piece and removing that, but we'll, we'll most likely have this piece out by the time we get to that part. All right, so I'm going to fire off the torch. And, of course, I'm not going to leave my wrench there and get hot while I'm heating that. Just really trying to flood the heat in 
all the way around that whole hub right there that I can see that where the threaded bolt is going into. Sometimes you'll see a little spurt of smoke or fume come out around the thread. And that's a good sign that you beat it up into that cavity, created some gas and it blows out beside the torch or the threaded area. Which is a real good sign if it happens. Got a little motion out of it. All right, we're able to move it. Okay. Now that that actual thread that you see right down in there, that's that's the helicoil. Okay, so these, these threads here also have helicoils. I can see my bolt turning inside the helicoil thread. Okay. And we're able to pull that bolt out. Bolt basically looks pretty good except for just a little bit of uh, oxidization on there from the aluminum frothing up and uh, whatever buildup is in in that area there. A little bit of rust but alright so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go for the next one down here while we have it here and then probably 180 this so that I can get to the other two over here. I saw that smoke spewing out as I broke it loose that cavity was spitting it out and of course I could see the spring load or the pressure from the gaskets and all of that opening up as well so this is just a ring around this copper face here so I swelled that up a little bit and it's wanting to push it off already so now I don't know what would have become of this without trying to heat it up first would we have had that scenario right there um, that's it's hard to say all right let's rotate this around and that's the aluminum just a piece of aluminum I put in there just so that jaw wouldn't grab into that surface there and Let's see, we're just going to put it in like this, and then we're going to put that aluminum here on this side. Something like that. Alright, check and see if you're still on view. Aluminum's kind of hard to tell if you're hot enough, so I'm kind of just showing you in real time so that see that smoke, you know that it's uh, breaking loose, flowing out, and the heat and the gas making it rise up. 
Now, a lot of people will say, hey, squirt some uh, cutting fluid in there or, or rust buster. And there's a, there's a couple out, out there. Most of the time when things are real, real packed and tight, it's like hard concrete, okay? And you're not going to penetrate that hard concrete anytime really fast. But expanding, a quick expansion, usually breaks loose the frozen area. Yeah, PB Blaster. I'm not knocking PB Blaster. It has its places, but it's not the not the everything go-to. I find sometimes when you introduce them chemicals into it, then you end up breathing a lot more junk in the air. And then you also give uh, contaminants to an area that you're eventually going to want to weld and build up. I think it just spit it spit out a little bit of yep you can almost see when that pressure builds in that little pocket behind the threads and it blows out around the threads it's a pretty good sign that the expansion has grown around the bolt and letting that gas escape and when that that happens that's kind of a sign that you, you, you've grown large enough to pull that bolt out All right, <clears throat> I'd say you got some clogging going on right there. All right, pop this ring loose. You get my other glove on here. I'd remove that for a minute. Okay, this beveled side goes towards the, the roundy surface there. And that copper head can be cleaned up. It, it, um, he's got the blaster and he'll be doing all the cleanup there and sending these parts out to be tanked and tested and all that stuff. Okay. Part of my job is done. I've actually pulled this off of here. Got those bolts out. Um, I don't have to clean that out. They're going to be doing all the cleaning on here so I'm going to see if I can get this piece out of here. I do know that I'm going to have to we're going to rotate this around right now because we're going to get the uh, plug out of the other side. I can see one is one, two, three, four, five, probably six, seven, eight, about eight tubes completely plugged off there. I don't know what the percentage ratio is, but uh, I know when you start getting plugged tubes, hard plugged tubes like that, you're going to start running hotter. You're going to start losing your efficiency on your cooler. Okay, we're going to get a wrench, see uh, what size it is here, and uh, just so we don't have to guess, and we can 7 8 We always have a 7 8 accessible and easy, right? Well, that was, I'm glad that wasn't too hard. Now, I think this is a, supposed to be a Z an anoid on this side here. And yeah, where did it go? Huh. <laughs> it didn't, you know, it, it ate completely off. And uh, see, the thing is, is you don't get in there and you don't change those things. They'll dissolve, they'll fall off, break prematurely. It, because I don't think they go like a wick all the way down. They, they go equally on all surfaces sticking out into the environment. And then a little piece might fall off or whatever. It might be a little chunk. Actually, by the time it eats like that, okay, there is going to be a little chunk of something in there. 
all right and then those pieces flow through and you get the buildups like that all right now this thing should just pop out or slide out which lacks to be seen right now so let's see if I can just lightly put that edge right there and then maybe soft soft mallet it out no luck with my my mallet it wasn't, it wasn't gonna go anywhere and I don't want to destroy any of this area right here this is all this is a hose uh, fitting here this is the plug for the anoid and I don't really want to pry out on this surface right here so what I did is I, I need some some of the surface to hold the aluminum housing and be able to push this thing in my hand arbor press so I can see a little bit more controlled motion if I'm even getting that amount of force if it doesn't pass this test and I don't think I can remove this without creating any damage I won't do anything to it I'll hand it back to the customer and he he can take it to e even the house <clears throat> that that builds these probably would for a certain dollar rebuild it any anyhow we're not going there right now we're just going to make the next attempt I screwed all four of the bolts back in. Now I want to set this on the mill table and make sure that they are all in fact touching because I'm going to use those to hold the aluminum housing <clears throat> and then I'm going to set it up in the press and I'm going to take a piece of aluminum I'm going to find a piece and we're going to put it down inside there and we're going to put a pusher in here and we're going to push against the end of that tube sheet on the end with the spread out over the top of all those fins real close to that tube sheet we'll be able to put enough pressure on here to see if we can actually push this out of here and it's only held in by o-ring tension and that's what I believe this normally is held in with o-rings around multiple ports probably one here one here maybe one in the center so oil will flow in through here around and come back out here but I don't know until we get this apart I've never had one of these apart alright okay we just turned it upside down on the mill table here and you can see I have a rocking going on in there. I could work this one here, I could work this one here. Um, it really doesn't matter. And I'm gonna go ahead and you gotta, you gotta go the right way. But just go ahead and screw it on the on the way out until you eliminate all your rock. Now I know that within reason I'm touching all four points at one time. So that's gonna give a good pushing platform of holding the aluminum housing all right now that we're we're stable the aluminum housing can be supported and then we get we need to get something down in there I did find a little block of aluminum I have a lot of little pieces around here and I think that's going to be big enough to support that and I measured my overall height to my arbor press and the closest thing I could find was this bolt here that holds down my vise on the uh, sibling drill press and that'll be enough to put that foot down on there and then press on here we're going to see if we can get some flex or motion in between the o-rings that I think are just a little sticky and that's what's keeping this thing in here so let's head on into the press and we're going to see if we can get a little bit of motion out of this and if we move at the height of those bolts there then we know that we're going to be able to go ahead and get this thing out safely then we can get some parallels probably underneath behind that flange on that end of the tube sheet all right, this is how we got it set up, and the bolts are just at the edge of this. We had to pull our our uh, swivel plate off the bottom to give us the total amount of height we needed in here, but it gives us four equal points still to rest on the aluminum. And there's about a quarter inch in here before we're making contact. All right, so I'm going to zoom you in close so that you can see this surface right here, and you'll be able to see if we got any motion coming in here. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, you just pushed right right on out. And that's all it was, was the O-ring pressure. You see, we didn't want to beat on it with that hammer. And let's look at it on this side. All right, 
and now we should be able to pull those out and the thing should pop out the rest of the way all right I come back into the vise here so that I got a better way of holding this and the way it was feeling with that of course arbor presses always feel like you're doing it easy right you got all that leverage with that arm and that rack and pinion And then uh, I'm just using two screwdrivers here because I don't think it's really going to take that much force. Okay, I should pull it, pull it by hand. There we go. Looks pretty good on this side. There's an O-ring seal right there. And there's probably one in on the housing on the other end. All right, I'm going to get a cardboard box to set this in here because I don't want oil all over it. Once we get to this point here, I, I, uh, ready to hand it back over to somebody to finish doing the cleaning. I'm glancing in the other side. I do see the O-ring there that rides around this surface right here. Okay, while I'm holding this with a rag here before I put it in a box here, I just wanted to show you that you have two ports, and I thought that there was a solid ring in the center here, and uh, uh, there there really wasn't, but this port here comes in here, and then comes out at this end, and then you can see this section of the fins right here are really cloudy and clogged, okay, then it comes out, so it comes out this opening here, travels through this side here, hits this side, it, it travels this zigzag all the way, comes out this end of the port over here, and then out this unit here. So, <clears throat> you can see that why you need to pull coolers and stuff like that apart. It's not, not just this side right here that you have to contend with, and then the zinc anoids uh, uh, failing, and then it's starting to eat on some of the other uh, alloys, like the solder that holds these things together. <clears throat> see that the... the Electrolysis will go for the softest material of the mix of the alloy first and then progress to the next and the next. <clears throat> but on this side here, you also have a filth that you have to contend with because you have particles from within your oil. All right? You can do oil changes and you change the oil filter, but there's other areas that when the, you force oil to flow through tight areas like a cooler, it tends to act like a filter and starts collecting deposits and then po deposits build on other deposits and then slowly clogs off your flow. Not that I'm an expert, I just pull this used stuff apart and I look at what neglect and failure to um, maintenance your items does to the individual items. Now this has been out before and somebody munged that or they did that from factory and installed it that way. I don't know if this has ever been a part before or maintenance ever before. All right. He's going to ship that out, clean it, and get it hydro tested and all of that good stuff. Now we got to get a rag and go ahead and wipe through here and we need to start prepping and cleaning this up so we can get a good look at it to decide what we're going to do for a repair on it. Alright, we wiped out the board with a rag real quick and uh, this doesn't, doesn't look too bad all the way around. You know, there's looking into that port we were telling you about that's on this end here and there's the port on that end. Alright, so that area right in there, you know, we need to we need to address and make sure that we get that hole inside there clean because we're gonna be we're gonna be walling on this face right here and that oil and stuff can be drawn out into our area of wall repair. I don't think we have to do any walling here, uh, as long as we get that stud out. Alright, back to our O ring. And I'm just reaching in here with a scribe and I'm gonna pull this out. And you can tell a lot 
by knowing how hard it is, dry, and the uh, and the buildups and stuff sticking around there. Sometimes you can see stuff on the side of the O-ring where somebody didn't have faith in the O-ring doing its job like it's supposed to be, and they uh, they throw some goop in there also, which doesn't doesn't really let the O-ring do what it's supposed to be doing. O-rings are supposed to work on clean metal to metal, smooth metal to metal contact. And I think this is the case right here. I see. Hard to tell if that's oil film that's turned to plastic or if that is some kind of a sealant or glue all right Kind of hard to tell. Someone on the outside also feels rubbery. Might have been some kind of silicone. All right, this is a look at the other side. And this is the register here for an O-ring groove that was around on that flange. And this area is pretty well shot all the way around here. There still is a decent area, probably right here, right there that we can get our overall height and we can measure a couple areas across here we can get a diameter and a depth so we're going to gingerly clean that up so we can get those dimensions and everything and then then we'll be prepping this in to go ahead and weld it and reface it all right first we're going to go on in and we're going to we're going to weld build up on that stud there and then we're going to weld a nut to it we're going to see if we can draw that out uh, without having to mess with that hole and then we're gonna play around with the idea of how we're gonna go about keeping these four helicoil holes in location during this wall buildup all right I've got my camera set up I'm doing a little test on uh, being able to take uh, photos or videos of of uh, walling and the puddles here. I got you zoomed in on the top of this stud, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna strike an arc and uh, create a little puddle here uh, once around on the top of this broken or this cut off or finished off bolt that's in this aluminum casting we're working on, and we're gonna give it a <clears throat> give it a shot here. And I'm gonna re review the tape there, and if it looks good, then we're gonna continue on. I'm gonna actually. Uh, um, create uh, a little bit of close-up of me working the puddle on top of this little stud here. castle and it kind of went around the edge all the way around the outside edge there all right I'm gonna stop the video and look okay I took a look at it and I made just a little slight adjustment and gave you a little bit darker which is C um, of course I'm just looking at the little screen so anyway we're gonna continue putting layer on layer until we build this up a couple layers and then we're gonna put the nut on and then we'll weld the nut to this buildup Looks like I'm got it built up high enough. All right, we've laid the nut over the top of our material now that we built up. So it's sitting over the whole little tower of well. I mean, 
initiate inside a little bit to the outside there and now we just kind of like walk around that inside thread area filling it up as we need We made sure we got enough heat going in there. That heat actually goes right down in through the stud. And we're gonna let that cool the room temperature. And we're gonna see if uh, we can put a wrench on that and break her loose. Okay. I can still feel a little warmth here, but all around, it, it dissipates pretty fast on something like this because aluminum actually sucks heat big time. And it is, it's taken it and spread it out throughout this whole part here, but nothing is real hot to touch. You might ask, what did I use on there? Um, I used 309L, which is a, st a stainless. Give me. It's an easy drip castle rod. It also tends not to um, boil up or create little air pockets like. 70 series wire does, TIG wire does, it sometimes when you don't have something really, really clean. And this is real, real forgiving, and it lets you bond to just about any other alloy, a nut that you can, you can think of about putting something on here. Um, you can see how smooth that is. I can still get a wrench on this thing, all right? And I don't know how tight this is. We may actually have to go into the vise, okay? I think I'm actually, able to I've said that before and then had the thing break off so and there we go all right so we're actually able to and we can see the helicoil in there is you know, maybe we'll have to get that cleaned up. That actually looks like a stock hole, whereas the other ones all look like they've had helicoils put in them. If that's the case, we can put one in there, but like, we need to get it clean. We need to get all that oil and everything else out of there. Because what we're going to attempt to do is to repair this phase, machine that, and create a round bore. If this closes in a little bit, we gotta open this up a little bit. Match, match the bore itself, and then skim and cut this. And uh, that's the next game plan. All right, let's get to it. You know, almost every video is hard to do without some kind of bloopers in it, and sometimes I just kind of leave them in there because you can't subtract uh, the video material and and past tense. Okay, once you once you've gone through the action and 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 created the ultimate of surprise, even while I'm doing it myself, and uh, such as pulling out this screw. In fact, actually, I've had to screw in and out so many times now I can actually see that there is a helo all of this was built with helicoils in as the main support for the threads and it's and it's a good thing i mean it's a it's a quality part i'm not uh finding any fault with the, the build on it most of the time helicoils have been put in after the fact where something has got stripped out but uh very common now is the practice of installing helicoils to create a better holding thread um, I had to laugh about the the little bit of footage after I did the weld scene I didn't change my camera settings so I was trying to catch the the control of the light and the camera really is um, got a mind of its own when you got it set on settings so if you're going and you're trying to do this with a lens and, and cover up and, and get the depth and the light and all of that, then when you bring it out and you set it up and you're actually in full light and, and, and that's why it gave the, uh, the almost uh, slow motion or speed up uh, um, aspect to the, the flick there. But anyway, uh, getting, getting the bolt out and being ready now to go ahead and start planning our repair on this end. Uh, we've had good success so far. Now we got a job of cleaning it up and getting it prepped 
and then coming back in here and we're going to do some wall build up on it and the reason why I mean this cooler is obsolete now it's um, it's not available at all anymore when it was available this was because I know that you guys are going to ask how much uh, the complete cooler uh, when it was available was online for 1190 bucks or so almost almost 1200 bucks for this little cooler um, the guys cleaning up the insert and all of that uh, they'll determine whether that's that good condition or whatever so this is my baby and that's their baby and and uh, hopefully uh, two and two together and we can get them a, a, a nice uh, usable cooler for down the road here all right I just wanted to touch bases on that because after editing the video and and looking at what I had for footage at the end there um, I, I had to I had to laugh but there's no way that I can I can take back or redo taking out something that's stuck for the very first time all right Let's get her done.